एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लासेस वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट सेमीकंडक्टर डिवाइसेस अंडर व्हिच वी स्टडीड अबाउट द डिटेल्स ऑफ पी एन जंक्शन एंड आल्सो इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास वी अंडरस्टूड अबाउट द एनर्जी लेवल डायग्राम एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद द पोटेंशियल बैरियर एट द पी एन जंक्शन स्पेशली एट इक्विलिब्रियम so it is clear that today we are going to study about the barrier potential at the pn junction and this barrier potential is nothing but the potential difference which is due to the accumulation of excess of immobile charge carriers in each layer across the junction at certain temperature t which means it is at equilibrium and after finding out the barrier potential we can express the charge concentration it may be electron concentration or hole concentration in terms of barrier potential so this will be our today's task to understand in detail about barrier potential whenever there is no external voltage applied across the pn junction crystal it means that no current is going to pass through the external circuit even when the p region and n region are shorted thus we can say that the net current through the junction must be zero separately for both free electrons as well as positive holes so first we will consider only the free electron current at the pn junction where we can observe that there are two components of current density flowing across the junction that is based on the direction we can explain about two components of current density one is jn another one is jn dash so first one jn is the component of current density that flows down the potential barrier with the electron flowing from p region to n region so arrow mark you can observe here which corresponds to jn and second one is jn dash which is the current density component explaining the flow of electrons from n region to p region so clearly in n region we know that free electrons are the majority charge carriers to p region where free electrons are minority charge carriers and now let us understand jn and jn dash in more detail so direction we have understood now based on which we have explained these two components coming to jn it is the current density flowing from p to n region and we know that in p region free electrons are the minority charge carriers and this is called as drift current density because the free electrons are under the influence of the field which is due to the potential barrier and thus the equation comes about jn is equals to ne mu n into e where n is the number of electrons per unit volume e is the charge of electron mu n is the mobility of electron and e is the electric field and we are calling it as equation number 1 in general we can say that the current density is equals to sigma into e that is conductivity into electric field and here conductivity is n e mu n because it explains about drift current density and this is the standard relation for that but remember that we are not applying any external voltage and this e which is the electric field intensity this is caused due to the potential barrier voltage itself so in our previous class when we were discussing about energy level diagram we have understood about the potential barrier which we denoted as vb and now moving to the second component that is jn dash which is the current density which is flowing from n region to p region and this is called as diffusion current density because we know that in n region free electrons are the majority charge carriers and here the concentration is less due to which the electrons are going to diffuse across the junction 
which is shown as this downward arrow mark which signifies the current flow due to diffusion. And the equation here is given as Jn dash is equals to E dn into dn by dx which we are calling as equation number 2. Here E is the charge of electron, dn is the diffusion constant and dn by dx is nothing but the gradient of electron density along given direction. So here if it is along x direction, it is the gradient of electron density along x direction. So in general we can say it is the concentration gradient because n is the carrier concentration. And how it is going to change? With respect to change in position along x direction e is the gradient. And this is again a standard formula which we have already discussed while discussing about the semiconductors or the transport in semiconductors. You can get it in the playlist section. Here we know that the depletion region will be formed here and the potential distribution across the junction will be varying with respect to the length of the PN junction like this. And here it is almost same. So this is what we have discussed while discussing about energy level diagram. And here we have understood the equation for drift as well as diffusion current density. And when the externally applied voltage we have considered to be zero, then at equilibrium the net current density flowing through the circuit must be zero. That is the sum of the two components has to be equal to zero which means Jn plus Jn dash should be equal to zero. Substituting the value from equation number one and two, we want to find the potential barrier at the PN junction which we can get if we concentrate on this E. So we will rearrange the above equation and take the second part to the RHS side. Then we can see charge of the electron E is going to get cancelled out due to which we get n mu n E is equals to minus dn into dn by dx. And now we are going to separate the variables that is collecting the terms of n on one side and x on another side. So we get minus E dx is equals to dn by mu n into dn by n. So after separating the variables we are going to integrate over the limits a to b minus e into dx. So here a to b is nothing but the extent of depletion region that is the length of it and p and n corresponds to p and n regions across the junction. In general we know that potential is given as field into distance or we can say v is equals to e into x due to which we can say dv is equals to e into dx. So substituting that value the limits are going to change with respect to the potential. So va to vb of minus in place of edx we have written dv and rhs remains the same. Now we can easily integrate. So here in integration of minus 1 is going to be v itself because the domain is with respect to potential. So minus v from va to vb putting the limits we get minus of upper limit minus lower limit is equals to dn by mu n is constant and integration of dn by n it is nothing but 1 by n form will be ln n. So ln upper limit is nn minus ln np where nn and np are the densities of free electrons in n region and p region respectively. And Va and Vb are the potentials at the location a and b which are the boundaries of the depletion region. So making use of laws of logarithm we know that ln a minus ln b is nothing but ln a by b. Using that we can write the barrier potential 
which is VA minus VB denoted as V capital B which implies the potential barrier or barrier potential will be equal to dn by mu n lan nn by np. So this is the equation of vb which we are calling as equation number 3. Then making use of this we can even find out the electron and hole concentration. So first we will deal with electron concentration for which we will make use of Einstein relation which relates the diffusion constant with mobility. So d is the diffusion constant, mu is the mobility, v is the potential and we know that v is equals to kbt by q. So we have substituted that value because kbt is nothing but e, e by charge is the potential. So when we rearrange this we can write d by mu or dn by mu n is equals to kbt divided by e. So this is the modified Einstein relation now and the same equation we can observe in equation number 3. So substituting the value in equation number 3 we get Vb is equals to kbt by E into lan nn by np. And we are dealing with the electron concentration that is n. So rearranging and simplifying we get nn by np is equals to exponential of this term. So we can express nn in terms of np as nn is equals to np exponential of evb by kbt where vb is the barrier potential and this gives the electron concentration in terms of barrier potential. And we have considered at equilibrium means at certain temperature t. Kb is the Boltzmann constant and in the same way we can also express about the whole concentration with certain changes and for holes we write the barrier potential Vb is equals to Kbt by E same as it is into lan Pp by Pn. So here we need to consider which one is the majority charge carrier in which region and which one is the minority charge carrier. Keeping that in mind, we can write the whole concentration as Pp is equals to Pn into exponential of EVB divided by Kbt, which we are calling as equation number 5. So when we are considering the whole current, we need to remember that Ni square is equals to Nn into Pn. So Ni square is nothing but the square of intrinsic carrier concentration. So that is nothing but the law of mass action. So Pn will be equal to Ni square by Nn. So even that can be substituted in place of Pn which modifies the equation of barrier potential. So for understanding in general a typical germanium Pn junction which is doped to an order of 10 raise to 22 impurities per meter cube then the barrier potential at room temperature is found to be about 0.3 volt. So we can understand the extent of voltage or the potential difference across the PN junction. And these are some of the details about the barrier potential at equilibrium in Pn junction and in our next class we will be dealing with the thickness of the barrier or the width of the depletion region. I hope you find this video helpful. So stay tuned, study well and thank you for watching.